Welcome to the Pitchworks Podcast. I'm Scott McTaggart. Over the last 20 years, I've been a sales rep, a marketer, a manager, an executive, a consultant, and an advisor. This show is designed to give you access to my list of contacts so that you can learn more about how to present your ideas at work and succeed in your career. Startups and salespeople, marketers and managers, from the Epicast Network in Pittsburgh, it's the Pitchworks Podcast. Like We do our process backwards. We don't really storyboard and say, hey, let's, let's get this shot or that shot. We just kind of roll out there and we make it more about the connections we're making. Right. And we film and then we come back and say, okay, what do we have? And then from that, we start to sort of go with it rather than mm-hmm. try to push or pull against it. And that's been kind of like also the business model this entire time is as things come up or as an idea comes into play, we try to go with that momentum. All right, it's that time again, Wednesday, and I'm Scott McTaggart, and that makes this the Pitchworks Podcast. Welcome aboard. We have a very interesting, and I'm not going to lie, a somewhat foreign thing going on here. Uh, The folks from Spare Change, specifically Josh Corcoran, uh, came in, took over, and they are teaching me a master class in video marketing and social media, and I'm not sure I'm up to the challenge, but I'm going to fake it till I make it. We've got uh, a really interesting conversation as spare change, if you're not familiar, and, and if you're in Pittsburgh, you probably know about this, but if you're outside, you, you probably don't yet. You take a band, you add a charity, you get the community involved, and you create this show where the charity gets extra funding, the band gets to you know, sort of do this, this good work, but it's still a business. Like it's, it, there's an actual working business here. And we talk about how they're pitching businesses to be involved, how charities, you know, are getting involved. There, there's a lot here to digest, but you know what I'm going to do. This is where I pull the, the rug out from under you. And I say, why don't you rate me on iTunes? Uh, the reason that I keep nagging you about that is because it's how people find programs that they like. It's how they find out what shows are good for them. So get in there, give us a star rating, give us some, some plain English feedback. Tell us what it is that you want out of this show and we will endeavor to give it to you, or at least I'll come on air and tell you why you can't have it. And that's, well, that's almost a promise. Anyway, get on there, iTunes rating and review, then jump onto the social channels. It's Twitter, Facebook, there's a LinkedIn company page. You can you can hit us up on Instagram. It's always Pitchworks, P-I-T-C-H-W-E-R-K-S. If you add a dot com to the end of that, you've got our website, and that's where the whole experience comes together. I hope you'll join us. Let's jump into this conversation with Josh Corcoran. He's going to tell us about spare change. I think you're going to love this episode. Josh Corcoran, welcome to the Epicast Studios. Thanks for coming in, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So this is... Definitely more stuff than we're used to having here in the, in the in the studio. Why don't you tell me what we're doing today? So we're gonna try to get some video for you today. We have a brand new 360 camera that you see that's high tech placed on this cup in front of us. It's it's really funny. It's like one part miracle, one part blasphemy because there's exactly. like this paper cup holding up this brand new 360 camera. It's pretty much a great uh, you know way to describe what spare change is about right there you have a very very nice camera that's professional (laughs) that's on top of a cup there you go that's spare change in a nutshell well and (laughs) and actually we should we should start off by telling people exactly what you're working on what spare change actually is i know you guys kind of taken pittsburgh by storm a little bit here but tell tell the people that are outside that area what you're doing sure so spare change is a pittsburgh-based web series where we partner businesses and nonprofits. And we do that through the lens of storytelling and music. Okay. And it began as just us filming us busking in the streets, playing music and giving the money away to a homeless person or someone that was in need. And it's really ramped up into this, you know, web series where we have different episodes where you benefit different people and kind of follow our adventures trying to just do great things. And, and you, ma- you made a, an entertainment series out of something that was obviously a very kind act, right? Like you're making this donation and you said like, Hey, you know what? People feel good and want to share in that. Yeah. But, and here's the real genius of it. If you don't mind me speaking on your behalf, which (laughs) if you're going to say I'm a genius, I'm not going to stop you. Let's do it. Keep going. Um, No, um, (laughs) I've said a number of times on this show that there are certain things that basically become one plus one equals three where 
you create value out of thin air and you said, okay, we feel good because of this thing we did, right? That first one where somebody just asked if they could have some change and you said, well, why don't you take it all, right? Yeah. That's, that made you feel good. Right. It's why we give gifts at Christmas. It's why we, because that is a great feeling. And you said, well, let's get that out to more people. Right. And I think a lot of times maybe we think about business as being about money and money about being greed or evil or whatever. But the business end of creating this web series is that, well, now we can do more of these good acts and it's funded by this whole business behind it. I mean, I love that bit and that's why I asked you to come in here today and I'm honestly very honored that you did. Oh, I appreciate it. it I mean, for us, we, like you said, it's been kind of like a snowball. We, we started this just like as an act of kindness that's just been growing and growing. Yeah. So to be able to get welcomed onto a, this podcast especially is an honor. One of the things people probably are wondering is, how do you, like, how, where's the money go into the machine? Like, where does it come out of the machine? <laughs> yeah. And if I understand it correctly, what you're doing is you're going to the businesses that might support the nonprofit that you've selected for this episode and... And you're pitching them on the idea of participation in this, I mean, it's kind of an ad. I mean, I, I don't mean to, you know, like cheapen it, but it's sure. kind of an ad. Yeah. Looks good on them. Yep. And the money goes into the pocket of these people who really need somebody to, to lend them a helping hand. Tell me if I've gotten any of that wrong. Well, you're, you're pretty close. And the funny thing is that, you know, we've had seven episodes so far. The eighth one's coming out soon, probably around the time that this podcast will come out. Yeah. And you were, you were nice enough to let me see it. And it, you have to see the eighth one. It is a huge <laughs> jump forward. I mean, it's, I, I would say cinematic in, in the way that it looks. Oh, I appreciate that. We are really excited to have this one come out and kind of tell this, this ongoing story of what's next. And that's kind of what you're hinting at is the, the business model going forward. But the cool thing about this series is that you can literally watch episode one through seven and see this, see ourselves realizing, oh, we're onto something here. And yeah. as it ramps up in quality, that model also changes. So it started out with just like whatever money we get in the bucket, let's give to someone and film it. Right. And it's gone then to let's take one business and one nonprofit and pair them together. And then we'll go play a concert to raise money. And it's grown into right now, you know, businesses around town that want to be a part of the next episode, kick money to the nonprofit. And we can sometimes pass that money through the nonprofit to us. Like they, they get a free commercial out of it. And then, uh, use that to sort of propel this thing. And what we're trying to get to, the end destination is getting some type of sponsorship of the episodes. Right. So all that money, like whatever it might be from the businesses can just go to the nonprofit and stay there. Okay. So we don't have to worry about necessarily the amount. If if business A wants to just be like, hey, guys, I have a hundred bucks. And we're like, we like what you do, business A. Great, throw that to the nonprofit. And yeah. it's a great way for us to help them, the nonprofit fundraise while also getting a free episode and like you said, advertisement out of it. And that's sort of like a win, win, win. It's well, I'm looking, for. yeah. And, and I'm glad that this, this episode of Pitchworks comes out at the same time as this episode of Spare Change, right? Uh, because when I saw it, I felt like we needed, when you and I were together, to, we needed to talk about the, mo uh, the model that was forming right there on the screen, right? You see where you were in state college, these businesses, they're, they kind of know their neighbors. They know who right. the, this nonprofit is. They know what the function is. It's a small town that is very committed to its neighbors, yep. right? And I totally. love that story. It, it, I mean, when you and I first met, I joked that you are a dopamine delivery system, <laughs> right? Where yeah. it's like people want to feel good. They don't always want crap. Totally. You can have a healthy business if you can get enough people on board with what you're working on. And that's why I wanted to bring you in here. And, you know, I want to, I want to dissect how it is that you're bringing people in and Hey, maybe we, maybe we trip over some things that are useful Absolutely. for the overall mission. So when you said, um, you said you'd like to have sponsors, let's start there. Have yeah. you had any conversations with sponsors? Yeah, we have. We actually had a few sponsors so far to varying degrees. Um, and, and, you know, we're, we're courting some as we speak right now for the eighth episode. Okay. When you speak to them, mm -hmm. what is, and you're doing it directly, not through an agency, not through a, Just us. it's you doing your own work. That's right. So there's no percentages and you're, you're keeping more of it, but it's also more work. Um, what's their reaction? 
do they do they feel like it's real now or are you still working toward that i think we're getting there with this eighth episode uh, is it that moment where people are saying oh this is a thing i want to be involved in i want to co-sign you know as we started out um very early on the cool thing is we had like traction right away the first episode is a minute long and yep. we just realized instantly like this is something and then we people are deficient in that that sort of like vicarious feel good. Yeah. They don't get enough of that. Yeah. And we didn't realize we were doing that at the time. It was just like, I, to this day, I don't know why we filmed the first episode. I really couldn't tell you why we just happened to pull just happened to be the, the phone out. And, that yeah, day. It was weird. And you know, it's one of those moments I'll look back on and be like, thank, thank goodness it happened. But I didn't know why. So early on we had moments of, of traction. Like we won, uh, the awesome, Pittsburgh pitch competition in March. Mm-hmm. So that was immediately kind of validating to say, you are onto something that you should keep effort into. And just that moment, that transaction that you won this grant uh, and from Pittsburgh with these Pittsburgh people behind you really was a, a real confidence booster. So that helped us say, okay, we have something worth getting behind. And we had our early partnership with uh, Commonwealth Press who did our logo. Oh, did, Dan did, and the guys. Yeah, so we did two logos and like pro- probably before they should even have given us even a look, but they were like, we like what you're doing. We want to work with you. A big part of this for us is this Pittsburgh community. So if we're going to make a logo, then yes, let's go to Commonwealth Press. And we hope mm-hmm. to keep doing that over and over again. So there's been some kind of partnerships and sponsorships, but this one we're talking about for episode eight is a new level where it's like, hey, we created essentially a, a short film. You did. And, and we're thinking about it in those terms. And Taylor over here on the wall, who's not <laughs> supposed to actually be a part of this episode, um, delivered one of the great shots with the drone coming in on the, on the pickup truck. Big time. I mean... That's his truck too, so he was trying to make it look great. <laughs> so you washed it first, didn't you? you did. I know you did. Oh, yeah. I know you did. <laughs> Taylor came in and that really upped this, like, the cinematography. And you can see the, a lot of those great shots you're seeing is Taylor's eye for just like, let's make this feel like a movie. Yeah, it, it looks like it. And, and, and even right up to the point where you catch the drone coming in, right? Like I could tell that maybe it wasn't originally part of the plan, nope. but we do the same kinds of things here where there are certain things that just have to stay in. Right. You yep. have to. And, and, we, and I don't know if it's human or if it's just because it's fun or the, the quality of the art just hits your eye and you don't really know what the it is, but it needs to stay in. For real. And, and we like we do the art process backwards. We don't really storyboard and say, hey, let's let's get this shot or that shot. We just kind of roll out there and we make it more about the connections we're making. Right. And we film and then we come back and say, okay, what do we have? And then from that, we start to sort of go with it rather than mm-hmm. try to push or pull against it. And that's been kind of like, also, the business model this entire time is as things come up or as an idea comes into play, we try to go with that momentum. Well, truth is actually in short supply too, right? And actually, one of the things that I get out of having all of your cameras in the studio today is everybody can see, like, you're not reading any talking points. I'm not reading any script. Right. Um, that authenticity of it, right, is like we talk about that word a lot. Like we use that word maybe too much, but... People want to know that there is not a string being pulled. Like I had Mila Sanina in here a little while ago from Public Source. They're uh, uh, a news agency that focuses on local, like deep dive local stories, right? And I asked her just flat out, I said, you know, how much of the news is actually driven by sponsors? And, sure. and, and you know, like, well, what the advertisers will like and those kinds of things. And she says, actually, far less than you would think. She says, I actually never saw it. There's only a few ways left that you can tell that things are unscripted and authentic, yeah. right? And you've got it because you're doing it the way you said. You said you do it backwards? Basically, you know? yeah. Yeah, so for us, I mean, when we're trying to figure out what we're going to be filming or doing, a big part of that uh, wonderment is us also discovering it as it's happening. Right. You know, we showed up to the Acres Project House, the, ben- the, the nonprofit we benefit in this next episode. Which is a really cool charity, by the way. It is a really cool charity. They actually help adults with autism. And we, re- we learned that there's not a lot of resources out there for adults with autism. And what they're doing is trying to find a house, well, they have a house that they're trying to find back to work programs for these adults. So it is housing, they can live there, but they're also doing things like virtual reality. So what they're trying to do is say, we think, you know, Joanne could be working as a cashier, but before we take her out into the world of the workforce and, and thrust her into that situation, let's put 
a VR headset on her and teach her how a cashier does what they do. Absolutely. And they, they do that in a confined setting that they can help them through. So for us, when we get to these moments like this, it, we could walk into that house and say, we're going to get shot A, B, and C, but it's better if we just go in there and say, what do we have? And Fred, this is when you say this. Exactly. Tom, that you're going to walk in and act surprised that we're all here, and then we're going to argue. Yeah, right? exactly. And then you're going to say, why'd you wear that shirt today? I wore it. Now, we don't, we realize that the, the thing we provide, it really is authenticity. Yeah. And there's going to be times where uh, there isn't that magical moment at the end of the episode where it's like everything came together and everyone was happy and that's yeah. it. Every and, once in a while, there's a restaurant that Gordon Ramsay can't save. Right? Yeah, Every I, once in a while, the Steelers lose. Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. And we've had a couple of times where we've gone out and filmed and we just, we didn't get it. We, we yeah. knew we didn't get it. And that's okay. And you know, the funny thing about it is, is with all the delivery systems you have today, whether that be Instagram or Snapchat, people are still on that ride with you. Yeah. And they know that backstory. They saw you go to a different business and, you know, busk for change and, and didn't see an episode come out of it. We're still making a good impact and it always can kind of, you know, level up to great content. And it's just where that delivery system is going to be. Is it a full episode? Maybe. Is it, you know, mm -hmm. a great Snapchat story on the weekend? Maybe that's what it is. But See, I like that. I like basically being ready to use the whole buffalo, right? You you're know, totally like, okay, right. <laughs> some days all we're going to get is a couple really nice shots of uh, us playing instruments. Yeah. Some days we're going to get this amazing, compelling story, which will completely push us to a, a, a level we didn't even have planned yet. Right. That's cool stuff. But how do you bridge the gap where you're sitting in front of somebody who doesn't understand new media? Sure. But can kind of tell that this is that cool, edgy thing he's looking for. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's funny because... I don't think of myself as like the young guy. I, I mean, I'm sure relatively you could say that. I'm, I'm 30 years old. Taylor to my left is 21, and we get to use Good his job, Taylor. Keep it up. youthful exuberance, and he can kind of guide us a little bit. But when it comes down to it, it's bigger than just, hey, I don't get a business saying, hey, I don't get social media or not. Mm. It's, it's why are we trying to sell to someone that doesn't want to buy? I agree with that more than you probably think, right? But I don't necessarily think that that's why they put that out there. I think it's a negotiating ploy to get you on the cheap. Sure. So they go, oh, well, this Snapchat thing's going to pass. <laughs> and that's the thing is we are sort of hedging our bets. Like right. you'll see, we do have effort into Snapchat and Instagram and Facebook. And now we're looking at 360 degree cameras. We are on top of it. Yeah, and now we're on a podcast. So what we're doing is we're spreading out and we're not being religious about how it happens. Yeah. So if Instagram dies tomorrow, we still have plenty of people on Facebook. So we're hedging those those bets by placing attention everywhere. Oh, sorry. Yeah, but uh, I apologize. I think I made that point wrong. I, I, I guess what I'm really driving at is how do you make the case to somebody who is working from a different idea of value? That's a great point. I mean, I think when you're when you're trying to get people in the same wavelength as you, yeah. you have different tools you can use. You can say, wow, we had this type of reach or this type of of you know, how many views we had for, for the episode, mm -hmm. this many likes. And obviously that currency is becoming more and more sort of recognized in the market. It People is. are understanding it. Yeah. Um, but I think that what we're trying to do, even if it's a slow build, is build a brand. And that's maybe a longer play, mm -hmm. but that's something that people can recognize is we want to associate with your brand. They might not know how we built this brand of spare change right. or the, the mechanisms of Instagram and Snapchat that made us build this thing. But I think that these businesses do recognize brand and say, we want you to shine a little bit of this on us. And I, that's the bigger side. I come I at it from a, from a position of, of protection for you, right? Like I, I want to protect what you're working on because I, I kind of feel like I, I want to see more of this in the world. And I just, I see too many people trying to devalue. It's the same, same uh, thought process that they use to sort of delegitimize the efforts of millennials, right? They sure. say like, uh, because I don't share their values, their tools, their understanding, they should be paid less, right? Or <laughs> yeah. they, right. And I, I sure. don't think you should be paid less. If anything, yeah. something new, like a pop-up kind of exciting driving enthusiasm mm -hmm. deserves a premium. And I'll add to that, good work deserves a premium. Yeah. 
P.S. We need to pay teachers more while I'm on that subject, but that's a that. completely different story for another podcast. I like it. My sister's a teacher. <laughs> I come from a family of teachers, yes. but anyway, the, uh, uh, all signs point to premium, but I see the negotiation being, well, you guys are just a band that decided to start putting out videos. And, I, and I'm <laughs> like I said, I'm super protective of you on yeah. that. Like I want to fix that because I've seen that room. I've been in that room mm-hmm. where somebody kind of devalues new media. Well, here's the interesting thing that we have going for us is, you know, we mentioned before that, yeah, we are negotiating these sponsorship deals right. ourselves. Yeah. Part of that is because, yeah, we don't have to outsource or pay someone a percentage. Sure. But more than that is like, again, it's building this brand. Like I don't, I like having Commonwealth Press's logo before our thing. I like what they're doing. Yeah. I like that co-sign. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm very sort of close to the hip about who we let into this world. Right. You know? Well, yeah, because it, guilt by association is a real thing. Totally. And so when it comes down to it, the great thing about what we're doing is that we can go out and produce an episode with no money. We can go busk. Yep. And we have that in our back pocket. Like if we had to, we can just go do just it. Just go do good work. So just, we don't yeah. have to take the bad deal. We can just keep going and going and taking the nose There's and the, the nose negotiation. and the nose. Yeah. You know when you'd walk away. Exactly. And I love this. Okay, so let's change subject. So the band is table 10. The band is table 10, yeah. Um, is that brand completely now part of the Spare Change brand or, or are we still trying to figure that out? We're st- I think we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know, this... Table 10 started out of Penn State, and we were, I think, seniors in college, and it was, that itself was kind of a fluke. We played at open mic nights at a bar called The First. Okay. We got traction, it picked up, and the bar owner was like, hey, guys, you need to pick a name now. And we were sitting at Table 10, and that was, oh, we're Table 10. Easy enough. And we never thought it was going to turn into anything. But, like, I have this thing where I can't just be in a band and, and enjoy playing music. I have to, like, turn it into a business and hustle yeah. and call the agencies and mm-hmm. get signed. So we did that and we went on tour for three years up and down the East coast. So it was a crazy life. We played as much as eight shows a week and, you know, really lived that band life where you get done at 2 AM, you load up by 3 AM, you're driving overnight. You got into town the next day at 7 AM, you sleep to the next show. Like it was, right. it was almost like grad school for me. Um, so now this whole thing started as like, Jared, who's also in Table 10, and I were in Pittsburgh, and we're like, let's start playing out again. We found Pete, who plays drums, Mm -hmm. and then we started playing a few shows to kind of kick the rust off, and the next thing you know, spare change happens. So the idea was like, hey, let's be, you know, guys around Pittsburgh and play a couple shows for fun, and it's just completely pivoted to this thing. So we've consciously decided, like, we are going to use the music to power this spare change vehicle yep. and not go play the show at the local bar just for, you know, just for fun when we could be going to play for a nonprofit or something beneficial towards this bigger movement we're creating. Right. So that's kind of where table 10 is lying right now. It's like a vehicle for spare change, but you and I have talked a little bit about this. It won't always be about table 10. It will be about the bands around Pittsburgh to start that we, th- we see are doing great things and trying to get kind of, like you said, multiplicative. Oh, it has to be. To another degree with the bands involved. You love the community. You love this cause. You have to feed your family. All this stuff multiplied times each other yeah. comes into like this big payoff. Like it, it is, it's like skin chills at the end because you're sitting there saying like, I did my job today, Yeah, right? I promoted my business today. I helped out people who needed help. This cool band came, you know, and made a fuss about what we're working on. And that feels good because it feels like third party confirmation of what it is that I'm doing, having value. Right. Sure. Um, and I'm almost certain that I got all the verb tenses in that (laughs) sentence wrong, but anyway, um, I'm taking you down a long winding garden path toward the payoff is so much more than it would have been if I had just experienced those things separately. You're multiplying now and, right. and, and you're tapping into that. Mm-hmm. So you go to now these businesses in, in episode eight right? and you did a nice job sort of showing us the businesses and, and helping them to tell their stories. How long did you need in order to understand what they were working on? Like, let's use the, um, the MMA gym as yeah. an example. How long did that take in actually making the deal 
figuring out what you were going to shoot, cool. shooting it. Yeah, so making the deal was easy because mm-hmm. we knew the, one of the owners of the gym, Bruce. Okay. He was a bartender when we played in State College back in the day. Oh, great. So he, he bartended right by the stage we played at, and he'd always be like, you guys made me a lot of money. Oh, great. <laughs> so he's a good guy, and he, and he, and he coaches MMA. So we, we hit him up and said, hey, we're coming into town. We're doing this thing. Have you seen the videos yet? He had seen them online, so we kind of got it. And, you know, it was a pretty easy sell. Hey, will you kick money to the Acres Project? And he's mm-hmm. like, cool. So that was an easy process. Then we moved to filming it. And that was, I mean, that, that entire episode was filmed over the course of four days. It was Good to know. That, that gives me a total time elapsed. Yeah, four okay. days. It was a, you know, it was a long, it was a long time, but it was cool because for us, it was the first time that we could kind of stay in this world for more than one moment or more than one day. Yeah. And. Then we went to film at the gym. That was probably about an hour and a half. And the idea was just like, let's get cool shots and obviously interview Bruce and talk about the story of how we're connected. Um, but it turned into, let's also box ourselves. And right. next thing you know, we've got the gloves on. And then, then we're getting taught on like, you know, how he teaches how to throw a punch. And it turned into like, okay, now your lesson's done and you're in this boxing class. So then we're doing squats, things you don't see in the video. But it's super cool. <laughs> I mean, again, we're back to like, we didn't necessarily know it was going to go there. Totally. And, and the fact that you didn't over assert control, right, right, is actually part of the secret recipe, right? You know, totally. it's just like, let's just see where this takes us. Absolutely. Let's yeah. not put too much thought into it. And then you know what? When we were when we realized like after our mini lesson one on one that we were in this class, it became like all right, these guys and girls that are in this boxing class come here every let's say every day and they put all their effort into this class. We can't be those guys that are there and not and like quitting. Like okay, our part's done. Bye guys, enjoy your class. It was right. kind of like we're gonna finish strong with you. Right. And so they're doing these like that's a good punching moment. drills and we're punching with them and then you have to do squats. You know, I mean so as I it, think I'm a pretty good person. <laughs> right. And I don't know that that you ever seemed like a good guy. Yeah, 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 don't let it fool you. <laughs> the I don't know that that ever would have uh, like occurred to me. The whole like we can't be the guys like half ass in this this class, right? Like right. You, you 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 dove in. Exactly. I don't know. Again, we're back to there's only so many ways that you can identify authenticity in a person and, and identify their commitment level. Yeah. Right? Um, that's really cool. And then after we were done, we had this great moment where we took a group photo and I just felt that, okay, we earned at least a little bit of respect that day. Yeah. No one's thinking that we're going to take them in a fight. Let's be serious. You've got now a few different choices in front of you. How often do you want to do episodes? Um, how long is the right length? We've been talking about how eight is the longest one you've done. I think it's 17 minutes. Uh, obviously you can push past that. Every sure. minute of video though takes how long to edit. I mean, there's, yeah. there's math you're doing here about <laughs> how, how sustainable it is, how expensive it is. Um, and there has to be some consideration of the audience. Like yeah. what do they want? Right. So, what do you know at this point as far as what they're looking for and what you can provide? Well, you know, it'd be naive of me to say I know what the audience wants because I, I think right now we're acquiring our audience we're right. in that mode. And we're, we're learning as we go um, based off their feedback. And a great way to tell that is like how many of our, our audience is organically sharing it right away. Right. They're co-signing yeah. what we're doing. That, that's a great sign. Beyond that, I think part of it is that they're on this journey with us. And because that fourth wall is down and because we talk to the camera and we're just as shocked as they are, yep. it's again, authenticity. They're on this ride with us. So it is an open communication line where like they could be in an episode and that's, right. that's a reality. They own it. Absolutely. I mean, that's why we that's, call it a movement Yeah, because it's not just us. And I never thought about it from that angle until and, just a second. This is the trap that the band used to get into. It was, do we play music that we think people like or do we play music that we like and that let them other learn? Other people happen to see the value of it as well. Exactly. So it, it's, it's really like a repetition. And yeah. when you go down that pathway of what, does people, what do people want, what do people think is cool, you're chasing something that may not be obtainable. Versus, okay, so I got I to gotta impart a little bit of wisdom on that one. Hit me with it. You did a, fa- you did a false choice there. Uh, do we play music that people like or do we play music that we like 
that people you know, like go along for the ride. You're there because you enjoy the reaction of the crowd. And there's some pieces you keep for yourself mm -hmm. and there's some pieces you give to them and it's compromise and it's dynamic and it's, yeah, it'll never be replicated, right? right? Like every show is different. Totally. But just, I mean, you can totally create two choices and make it look like that's the whole universe of options. Yeah, that's a good point. I guess for us, it's like we're, I don't want to say we're not putting thought in it because we're clearly putting a lot of thought in what we're doing. Right. I just want to say like, if we're driving by certain forces, like driving towards authenticity or driving towards what we think is doing the right thing, you know, those major pillars of what we're doing, yeah. that's going to be sort of our compass. And mm -hmm. if it takes us to, you know, this destination or that nonprofit, then so be it. We'll ride the wave. I actually was hoping that it might inform your planning going forward saying sometimes it's okay to hold something to yourself. Yeah. And sometimes it's okay to take that same thing and give it out to the crowd. Just see what happens. Yeah. You know, like, you're kind of just, you've got a row of switches and you can just flip them <laughs> up and down any which way you want and just have fun with it yeah. because no one lives and dies on switch number three being in the up position. You just know you want to get the reaction out of the audience. But part of the, part of the music that you're playing is the compromise, right? There's a yeah. note that's for them. There's a note that's for you. There's sure. a song that's for them. There's a song that's for you. It's, yeah. you know, there's, there's notes and there's gaps. It's a give and take for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, it's funny that there are so many parallels from back in the day to now with what we're doing. Mm. And that's a really good point going forward is trying to remember that we don't have to pick one or the other, that sometimes you need that perspective to look back and say, there's a plethora Don't look too of far ideas. back because you're too far away from the microphone. I can't yeah, hear sorry. you. Sorry. <laughs> I really went back. Ah, you sure did. That's why we had the cameras. All of a sudden you ghosted out. Let me ask you though, with this podcast, it's near and dear to your heart. Yeah. How, and I know that you've, you've developed it with the audience in mind. Yeah. And, you know, as far as the average drive time to work is 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Yep. So your episodes fall in that moment. You have the songs cho chosen meticulously mm -hmm. and the quality is phenomenal. Thank you. So what parts of that are for you or is it all for you that the audience is getting this, you know? Oh, no, no, no. I, I there are certain parts that are definitely for me. Um, I... I could have very easily showcased something less than what I think are the best of us and, and had it be purely academic, right? Sure. We could have just had a, well, you know, this is Joe. Joe works for ABC Corporation. He sells powder coatings that are technically toxic, so don't eat them. <laughs> but... This is Joe's story because he's a very good closer, right? Yeah. We could have had that. Totally. So the part that's for me is who comes on. Nice. Um, and the people that don't have a loud enough microphone who should have a louder microphone. Like there are certain people who are working on really brutally cool stuff. Yeah. That doesn't end up with a Super Bowl spot. Right. And therefore, you didn't know it was out there. Yeah. Right? So that's the part that's for me. The amplification. Everything else, though, is basically driven by data from the from the audience. Right. Like you said, I wanted to know how long does it take people to drive to work. I wanted to know those kinds of things. Any sneak previews for who's coming up? Coming up in the next episodes? Mm -hmm. Well, we have, obviously, this one, Acres Project and State College is heavily featured. We're talking right now about, uh, we're going to definitely benefit Science Tots. Mm -hmm. We love what they're doing. Erica's fantastic. Erica's great. We think what she's doing is cool. It's a new story that people don't hear all the time. Erica we're, Peterson from, from Science Tots is who we're talking about. Right. Yeah, that's, so we're, a, that's we're trying a good program. To, we're trying to build out an episode about, around that right now. We're playing yeah. a benefit show. We don't know we have an episode yet. So we're in that okay. midst right now of contacting businesses and say, hey, you want to get behind this? Right. Um, and then we have a really cool project coming up that it's actually, a, it's basically a, a chamber of commerce from a community likes what we're doing and said, Hey, we're having a big event for nonprofits. We want you to come showcase our community to promote our event. Oh, that's awesome. Josh, thanks for coming into the studio. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. All right. Sadly, that's the end of this week's episode. You know, we always try to make sure that, uh, this fits in on your commute and, uh, Josh made reference to that and it's still true this week. So, uh, I'm sure there will be more that drips out. We're going to, you know, we're going to post some pictures and videos and all different kinds of things. And then uh, as per usual, we're preparing another show for you here in the lab. That'll be out in about seven days. And uh, I hope you'll take care of yourself in the meantime. The Pitchworks podcast comes to you from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a production of the Epicast Network and McTaggart LLC. 
Engineering and production by Buzzy Torek and Nick Miller. For more information, show feedback, and ad sales, visit pitchworks.com. E I T C H W E R K S.com. On social media, find and follow the show on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram using that same brand name, P I T C H W E R K S.